I lift my eyes to the hills where my help is coming. <coughs> okay, uh, we'll stick primarily to the sheet that I handed out, uh, the sheets, the Bible study. Uh, there are two, two words that we're looking at today is in Christ, I in, in Christ. And as you go through the scriptures, you find that there are two different ways, uh, two different meanings of being in Christ. Uh, first of all, we were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Before the world ever began, God knew us. God chose us, and God placed us in Christ Jesus, and that's eternally in Christ. Nothing can ever separate us from being in Christ fundamentally. Everybody that is saved is in Christ fundamentally. Everybody that's experienced uh, eternal salvation uh, are in Christ fundamentally. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. Just a moment. Ephesians chapter 1. In Ephesians chapter 1, you notice beginning in verse uh, 4. Ephesians <clears throat> chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. Ephesians 1, beginning in verse 4, the Word of God says, According as He hath chosen us in Him, that's in Christ, in Him, before the foundation of the world. That's hard to imagine. But before this world ever began, God chose us and placed us in Christ Jesus. According as he hath chosen us in him, that is in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So we are in Christ fundamentally, eternally, and nothing can never separate us from being in Christ. <clears throat> it's kind of like being in my family. Uh, I have three living children. Uh, can anything change them being in my family? Are they in my family forever? Yes. They are. Uh, they're always going to be in my family. That's our relationship. Father-child relationship. Everybody understand that father-child relationship? Doesn't matter how that child lives, that child is forever my child. That's the way it is with being in Christ fundamentally. We are in Christ forever because we were chosen in Christ, placed in Christ. We're part of the family of God because of what God has done for us. Now, can my fellowship, there's a difference in being in Christ fundamentally and being in Christ in a practical way. Being in Christ in a practical way has to do with our fellowship with Christ. Our fellowship. Can my children do something that will affect our relationship? What's our relationship? I was tricking you there. What's the relationship? Father-child. Father, child, that's the relationship. Can anything change that father-child relationship? Nothing. Even if my child children don't act right, they're still my children. But can their actions affect our fellowship? What's the difference in our fellowship and our relationship? What does it mean to have fellowship with somebody? What does it mean to have fellowship with somebody? A lot of different ways you can describe that, but tell me in your own words, what do you think it means to have fellowship with somebody? Manifest love. Okay. If you're, if you're uh, in fellowship with someone, you're going to be manifesting love toward them. You're going to be manifesting love if you're in fellowship with them. And are there things that people can do that will affect your fellowship with them? If I took a list of all my friends today and I went back 40 years ago, 
that a lot of the people that were that I was in fellowship with 40 years ago that I'm not in fellowship with them today they're still my brothers and sisters in Christ we're still part of the family of God but families sometimes lose fellowship with each other another word for fellowship is friendship friendship are you and I friends uh, do we have fellowship Okay. Tell me some ways that people who are friends and have fellowship, some ways that they manifest their friendship or fellowship. They help each other with things they need, go out to dinner and study together. Okay. Help, help each other with things that they need. If uh, Brother Walter needs a new roof on his house, everybody that really cares about them is going to be there to help put the new roof on the house. That's fellowship. Uh, friendship. Our fellowship can vary with Christ. Our relationship cannot vary. We can do something that will destroy our friendship with each other. We can do something that will destroy our friendship with Jesus. Jesus says, ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. So when I stop doing what Jesus commands me to do, I lose my fill in the blank. I lose my what? Fellowship. Say it again. Fellowship. fellowship or friendship. I lose my fellowship or my friendship when I stop following Jesus, when I stop keeping his commandments. He will not be my friend. He will not have fellowship with me. He will not manifest his love to me. He still loves me, but he won't show that love to me when I'm not walking in the right way. Tell me again, somebody summarize what we've said so far about the difference in being in Christ fundamentally, which is forever. Nothing can change that. That's our father-child relationship. What's the difference in that and our friendship or fellowship? Okay, one is solid as a rock. Which one is it that's solid as a rock? Relationship. Nothing can change that relationship. Melissa's my daughter. No matter what she does, she's always going to be my daughter. That's our relationship. Can she do something that will affect our fellowship? Absolutely. Can I do something that will affect our fellowship? Sure. That's what we're talking about. Being in Christ forever. We are in Christ forever as far as our eternal salvation is concerned. We are preserved in Christ Jesus. We are kept in Christ Jesus. Those are some expressions the Bible uses. Eternally because of being chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Okay? So we are part of the family of God and nothing can ever change the fact you were part of the family of God, but we can lose our friendship with God. Turn in your Bibles to uh, John chapter 15. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 15. Everybody look in your Bibles at John chapter 15. Uh, we'll start with verse 1. Remember now, what are the two words that we're looking at today? In Christ. In Christ. We are in Christ forever. Because of what God has done for us. But we can be in Christ fellowship and friendship if we do what, what he tells us to do. John chapter 15, he uses an illustration here of Jesus is the vine. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches on that vine. So you see how we are in Christ in the analogy that's given here, Jesus says, I'm the vine, and you are the branches. And those branches are in Christ. But Christ can, when those branches don't bring forth fruit, what do I mean that we're supposed to bring forth fruit in our lives? What do I mean that the children of God are supposed to bring forth fruit in their lives? Good work. 
Good works. Good works are the fruit. Thank you very much. Fruit. Good works. Uh, if I'm loving, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. If I'm loving people, I'm bringing forth, fill in the blank. I'm bringing forth good fruit. I can bring forth good fruit, or I can bring forth evil fruit. I can hate people. That's bad fruit. Or I can bring forth good fruit by loving people. And if I bring forth bad fruit or no fruit, even though I am in the vine, Christ will break me off from the vine. That means I lose my either friendship or fellowship. Which one do I, I mean either friendship or relationship. Which one do I lose if I don't keep his commandments? Friendship. I lose my friendship. Okay, John chapter 15 starting with verse 1. You read that. John 15, uh, read the first two verses, please. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, and that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay, what are the two main words we're looking at today? But what are the two main words we're looking at? In Christ. In Christ. And Jesus says in verse 2, every branch, what are the next two words there? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. He's going to come on down further and he's going to say, he's going to break that branch off. I'm a branch. Every branch in Christ that does not bring forth fruit, that doesn't live right, that doesn't do right, he'll break them off from fill in the blank. Fellowship or friendship. They lose their friendship or fellowship when they don't bring forth fruit. Have you ever lost fellowship or friendship with God? Have you ever done something that caused you to lose close fellowship with God? I have. All of us have. When we do that and it's wrong, we lose our what? Fellowship, fellowship or friendship with God. Do I lose my relationship, father-child relationship, when I do what's wrong? No. I'm always going to be in Christ, fundamentally, eternally. I'm chosen in Christ, and I'm preserved in Christ, and I'm kept in Christ by the power of God. But my fellowship in Christ depends on me bringing forth fruit. Okay? Let's keep reading here. Read uh, again, read verses 1 and 2, summarize verses 1 and 2, and then we'll start with verse 3. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay, what does that mean, every branch in me uh, that beareth fruit, he purgeth it? Now what does it mean? To purge a branch. What's the difference in being taken away from the vine and the branch being purged? Or another word we use today in vine, growing vines, growing grapes. You got a branch off of the main vine. You're going to purge that branch or you're going to prune the branch. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Pruning a branch? That's where you cut off some of the excess part of the, of the uh, branch. What happens on a grapevine when you take a branch and you prune the branch, what does that branch do the next year? Produces a lot more fruit the next year. So Jesus says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, what does he do? He taketh it away. He breaks it off. But every branch in me that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. He trims us back. Have you ever had God trim back some things in your life? He trims it back so that we can do what? Grow stronger and bring forth more fruit. Okay? Keep reading now with verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. 
Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. All right, well, explain verse 4. Just take, uh, what, first of all, the first three words. What does Jesus mean, abide in me? Have a close relationship with him. Okay, have a close, let's get the wording. There you go. Have close fellowship with him. Tell me, what can you do to abide in Christ or have close fellowship with Him? What can you do to stay in Christ's fellowship? Keep His commandments. Keep His commandments. Abide in me. Does coming to church help you abide in Christ? Does reading and studying the Bible help you abide in Christ? What does the word abide mean? It means to live with or dwell with. <clears throat> if I say... What is your abode? I'm saying, what's your address? What house do you live in? That's your abode. Anybody follow that? Okay, so uh, Jesus says, abide in me. Stay close to me. Stay close to me by going to God's house, by studying his word, by praying, by singing. A lot of different things that we can do to abide in Christ. So it says in verse 4, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. What happens to a branch, if you've got a vine and you've got a branch, what happens to that branch if the branch is broken off from the vine? The branch dies. What happens to children of God spiritually when they are broken off from the vine or Christ? I have a soul death. That's exactly right. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. There's no way I can bring forth fruit unless I am abiding in the vine. He says, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Okay, how can you tell... How can you tell if somebody is abiding in Christ? How can you tell if they are having fellowship with Christ? How can you tell if they are in Christ in his fellowship? Uh, you can tell by their words and their actions. Okay, by the words, their actions, the things that they're doing, the way that they're living, you can tell whether or not somebody is in Christ fellowship and whether they're a friend of God. A person that's a friend of God is going to be pleasing God by the way that they live. Okay? Verse 6, everybody, John 15, verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Okay? Is, are there serious consequences of not abiding in Christ? We must stay in Christ, must have fellowship with Christ, must do what's necessary to, to be able to bring forth fruit. So it says in verse 6, if a man abide not in me, if he doesn't abide in Christ, can he bring forth fruit, good fruit? You can't bring forth good fruit unless you are abiding in Christ. Unless you're attached to the vine, that's where we get our strength, that's where we get our nourishment, that's where we get... A knowledge of how to live is by abiding in Christ. So if we abide in Christ, we're going to be bringing forth fruit. But if we abide not in Christ, he's already told us, the branch cannot bring forth fruit except it abide in the vine. So every night when I go to bed, there's something I do every night. What do you think it is that I do every single night when I get in bed? Pray. 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 Uh, we pray. What else? When else do we pray? When else do we pray? When do we pray the hardest? When, we do, when do we pray the most fervently? When times are hard. When times are hard. When I'm having a difficult, difficult time. <clears throat> then I pray more fervently. Uh, but we need to pray. We need to read the word of God. We need to do things to help other people. That's the way that we serve Christ. Let me repeat that. 
If I want to serve Christ, if I want to please Christ, I've got to do things for other people. Jesus says, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Jesus doesn't need anything from me. But God's children need things. And we, as children of God, are supposed to be serving other people and doing things for them. When we're doing things for other people, then we're serving them, thereby pleasing Christ. Okay? That's the way we bring forth fruit. One of the best ways to bring forth fruit is doing things to help somebody else. It can be little children. It can be adults. Uh, it can be neighbors. It can be relatives. It can be strangers. But you can do things to encourage and help and strengthen other people by the things you do and say. Can you actually... Encourage people by the words that come out of your mouth. Yes, yes absolutely. Alright, so I tell me again. What's the difference in being in Christ, in a relationship with Christ, and being in Christ, having a friendship with Christ? What's the difference? Being fundamentally in Christ is, has nothing to do with no works, and it's, can't be changed. It doesn't matter what we do, try to do. Can't change it. And then being, uh, being in Christ practically is is dependent on our obedience to God's commandments. Okay. Very good. Turn in your Bibles to Romans just a moment. Turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, listen to verse 1. If you, go, if you were to go back to John chapter 15, are there serious consequences of not abiding in Christ and not keeping the commandments of God and not being in fellowship with Christ? Are there serious consequences? Absolutely. Can a child of God experience, listen carefully to this question, can a child of God experience a hell on earth? What do I mean by a hell on earth? The, the absence of Christ manifesting His love, of brother, brother Travis was saying that when we separate ourselves from God and His judgments and all come upon us. Okay. Yeah. The, the last phrase is the main thing. Uh, you can lose fellowship with Christ and not feel that you're in hell to begin with. But the ultimate is you experience the judgments of Christ upon you, and that's when you're in a hell on earth. Can you tell me anybody in the Bible that the Bible teaches us that God told him to do something, he didn't do it, and he said, from the belly of hell cried I. Do you remember who that was? Say it again. Jonah. Jonah. God told Jonah, rise, go to Nineveh. Jonah arose and fled to Tarshish. He did not do what God told him to do. He ended up in the ocean. A whale swallowed him. And he said, from the belly of hell, cried I. Did he die and go to hell? Did he die and go to hell? No. Was he still alive? But he was in a living hell here on this earth. Yes. And a lot of God's children who will be in heaven eternally, they experience a lot of hell while they live here on this earth. They lose the friendship of Christ, and they lose their uh, fellowship with Christ, and then they experience the judgment of Christ upon them. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Look now. <clears throat> Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay, Romans 8, verse 1 says... <clears throat> There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. The two words in Christ here, are they talking about eternally in Christ? Our relationship with Christ? Or are they talking about our fellowship with Christ? Fellowship. fellowship. Exactly right. There is therefore now, in this world, 
There's no condemnation to them which are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. When they're walking after the Spirit, they're doing what God would have them to do. They're in fellowship. And there's no condemnation to those that are following the Spirit rather than the flesh. Come down to the last two verses of the same chapter. Romans chapter 8. Look at verses 38 and 39. Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, is this talking about eternally, or is this talking about fellowship? Yes, this is talking about eternal. This is talking about the fact that nothing can separate us from the love of God. God loves us with an everlasting love, and nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's talking about eternally. Go to Romans 16. Romans 16, look at verse 3. There are, be, there are going to be several scriptures, or several statements in Romans 16, and I want, I want you to tell me, what is the in Christ that's under consideration here? Romans 16, three, verse 3. Romans 16, verse 3. Greek Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Okay. In Christ Jesus. Aquila and Priscilla were in Christ Jesus. You think this is talking about fundamentally or in a practical way? Practical. Now let me say this. It's, it's always, anybody that's practically uh, in Christ is fundamentally in Christ. You can't be in Christ in a friendship way without, without first being in Christ in a fundamental way. And there are some of these that you can read and you might think it's one way and somebody else might read it another way. But I think every one of these is talking about people that were serving God and therefore they were in Christ. Paul knew that they were in Christ. Romans 16. This Go ahead. Is my helpers. So that's, that's the yes. Word there. Yes. In verse 3 it says, Greek Priscilla and Aquila, my what? My helpers. Now, somebody that's a helper is somebody that's doing what God would have us to do. Okay, that's a helper. That's a doer. Therefore, we're talking about in Christ in a practical way. Come down to verse, still the same chapter, Romans 16, verse 7. Romans 16, verse 7. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Okay. Practical or fundamental? Practical. Practical. This is talking about fellowship. They were in Christ. He says they were in Christ. Before me. Everybody follow that? Now, if it had been fundamental, when did you get in Christ fundamentally? Before the foundation of the world. All of us got in Christ fundamentally at the same time before the foundation of the world. But there's a difference in when I get in Christ in a fellowship way and friendship way. The sooner I serve God, the quicker I become a friend of God. Somebody tell me, why are we looking at this subject? Why are we looking at the two different ways that we can be in Christ? One has to do with our eternal salvation. One never changes. One has to do with our relationship to Christ. And the other one has to do with our friendship with Christ. Why are we studying these two words, in Christ, looking at the two different meanings of the two words, in Christ? Why are we studying that? You have to rightly divide the Word of God. And if you don't know the differences, you could read one thing and it would be talking about God cutting you off and, and in Christ. And you may think, oh, well, I could do something to make me not go to heaven. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, those that do not believe in eternal security, guess what they don't understand? The in Christ differences. They don't understand the two different in Christ that there is. Because are there scriptures that show you can lose your fellowship with Christ? Yes. Absolutely. Can you be broken off from Christ? Yes, you can. 
Does that mean you're going to lose your eternal salvation? No, it does not. Okay? I'll summarize everything we've studied so far. Just, just try to kind of... To me, just in Christ, broken down in two parts. Um, the first part is something that we have no control over. Um, that's something that Christ has done His work done. And that's something we have no control over as far as the relationship there. Um, and the second part is works that works or obedience to his following um, that we have to follow in order or else we will be broken off from Christ in the mind of that fellowship. Okay. Very good, very good. Turn to first Thessalonians very quickly in your Bible. First Thessalonians chapter four. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Can you read that, please? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, we're talking about in Christ. The dead in Christ, those that are physically dead, but they're in Christ. The dead in Christ shall rise first. This is talking about the final resurrection. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, is this talking about fundamentally relationship in Christ or is it talking about fellowship and friendship in Christ? Fundamentally. Fundamentally. All the dead in Christ, all the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain uh, shall be caught up together with them in the, air, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Go with you to one other talking about the, the friendship. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Will you read that? 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Yeah, and all of that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay. Yeah, and all that, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Is that in Christ Jesus fundamentally or practically? Practically. Yes. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus, that's following Christ, being a disciple of Christ, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? Go ahead and closing to one more verse of Scripture. Turn to the next to the last book of the Bible. And this is uh, the last Scripture listed on your handout. Turn to Jude... Uh, in Jude, look please at uh, verse 1. Uh, Jude, verse 1. Next to the last book of the Bible, the first verse of Scripture in that. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Okay. We are... This talks about those that are preserved, they're sanctified by God the Father, and they are preserved in Christ Jesus. Is that fundamentally, eternally, or is that practically friendship? Fundamental. That's fundamentally, eternally. We are preserved in Christ Jesus. We're kept in Christ Jesus. We're forever in Christ Jesus. And that gives me great peace in my soul to know that nothing can separate me from the love of God. I'm a child of God. I belong to God. He's my Father. That relationship cannot be changed forever. And that gives me great peace in my soul. I sometimes lose my fill in the blank. I lose my blank in Christ. What do I lose? My fellowship. My fellowship. But I don't ever lose my relationship. I'm always the child of God. Okay? Now since I am a child of God, if I don't live right, then what does my Father do to me if I don't live right? He judges me. He chastens me. The Bible says, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. What does it mean to chase? That doesn't mean run after him. What's chasten mean? Does it? Like discipline? Yes, discipline, exactly. Chasten means to discipline. Parents that love their children will discipline or chasten their children. God chastens us. 
There are some people in this world that are not chastened by God. The only people that are ever chastened by God are, God, are those that are in Christ fundamentally. God loves them. Christ died for them. And God will not let them live any way they want to without experiencing the discipline or the chastening from God. Okay? So do I have a reason to fear God? Yes, I have a reason to fear God. Do I have a reason to keep his commandments? Absolutely. If I don't keep his commandments, is that going to keep me out of heaven when I die? No, not at all. I hope that God will help us as we meditate on these. I encourage you to go home and read and study these. If you will, this is a test now. You will, you go home and you either put an F for friendship or an R for relationship or some other way that you come up with, but you go through all of these verses and see if you can put down this is in Christ fundamentally or this is in Christ friendship or practically. Okay? And then if you want to get a diploma, then you bring that sheet to me and if you make 100 on it, you get a diploma. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. Love you.